Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now yesterday we tested the $149 AMD EPIC 4124P. This is a quad core CPU with 8 threads and at the time I assumed that it was probably the best quad core processor for gaming you could buy. Of course the obvious letdowns were the cost, the fact that it has 4 cores and the fact that it's very hard to find plus the price. There are a lot more negatives I feel than positives uh, when it comes to buying this cheap epic processor especially when the 7500f or 7600 isn't going to cost you that much more that said i want to investigate my assumption and compare it today to the i3 14100f to see which of these two quad core chips is king the i3 can of course be had for about half the price that I found the Epic CPU for here in the UK. Clocks to 4.5 GHz, uses less than 60 watts of power, whereas the Epic chip clocks to over 5 GHz and uses less than 90. I've used both with DDR5 at 6400 MHz today to get the best out of these, and I've paired them with a 4070 Super as well. Well, we have to bear in mind that if you pair the i3 with DDR4, then you may see slightly worse results, perhaps better depending on the game, but let's get into it. We'll remind ourselves of yesterday's Cinebench R23 result, whereby the Epic CPU came out on top, but let's get into some gaming tests now, starting with Cyberpunk 2077. So at 1080p high for the Epic processor, we saw 99 FPS as an average, a 1% low of 57 and a 0.1% low of 38. The i3 came in slightly behind with a 96 FPS average, a 1% low of 55, but we did see an improved percentile low of 45. Let's move on. Stalker 2, 1080p at high settings now. 69 FPS, very nice for the Epic CPU with a 1% low of 30 and a 0.1% low of 20 here. We can see that the four cores are definitely a limitation because of the inconsistencies. The same can be said for the i3. We saw the same average frame rate, 69 FPS with a 1% low of 30, so the same again, and a 0.1% low of 16, so slightly worse off for the i3 this time around. Counter-Strike 2, 1080p with the high preset, 246 FPS for the Epic CPU with a 1% low of 112 and a 0.1% number of 49. With the i3, we saw 224, so quite a bit less in terms of that average figure. Uh, the 1% low was the same, 112, and the 0.1% low was a bit worse, 35 compared to 49. Forza Horizon 5 now with the Ultra preset we saw 144 fps for the epic 4124p this is compared to 147 for the i3 so this one came out on top here that being said the percentile lows well it was a mixed bag really 95 for the epic and 94 for the i3 so margin of error territory there and 64 for the 0.1% low with the Epic processor and 68 for the i3. So you could argue it was slightly more consistent overall, but these two really are trading blows with each other at 1080p with a 4070 Super. A card I might add that's probably not going to be paired with either of these two realistically, but we use a card like this to get the most out of each CPU and give you a better idea of how they compare. The same goes for the 1080p resolution. GTA 5 now, a slightly older game. This fared slightly better on the i3, 125 FPS compared to 122. The percentile figures were also slightly better or quite a bit better with the 14100 F, 83 and 48 compared to 76 and 30 respectively. A few more dips and drops with the Epic CPU. A chip, of course, which isn't intended to uh, use in a gaming rig, though there's no reason why you couldn't, as we have proved yesterday and today, of course. Finally, we have Red Dead Redemption 2. We could go on all night, but the results are always going to switch places in terms of which one comes out on top. 97 FPS for the Epic processor here. This was actually 10 frames more per second than the i3, so this is a pretty clear-cut result. 65 FPS for that 1% low in comparison to 60 for the i3, and a 61 FPS 0.1% low put the Epic way ahead of the 52 FPS we saw with the 14100F. So that one definitely comes out on top here. But as you've seen from all the results, it can go either way with either of these two. The 14100F, of course, a lower power chip, 
more widely available, cheaper, comes with a stock cooler, and can be used with DDR4 or DDR5. So I think you have your answer as to which one makes more sense for gaming, but don't forget the 12400F, the legend, isn't that much more than even the best i3 in 2025 and that's going to do you a lot better because of the extra cores. Thanks for watching, let me know your thoughts down below and I'll see you next time.